I'm actually your speaker today and I'm going to talk to you about water, water everywhere and how it affects your selling of real estate in Sacramento. You are um, stuck with someone who taught history and likes to talk. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of California and how the, the water has affected our history from the very beginning. You know, the whole Central Valley is a large floodplain because we have the mountains coming from both sides that get snow, that get they gather water and come feed down through these many, many rivers that come into the valley. When Sutter came and built his fort, he built it between two rivers. And you think, he built it a mile from the river. That means he had to haul the water. Why didn't he build it right next to the river? Well, if you go and look at Fort Sutter, you're going to see it's up on a knoll. He built it there so he wouldn't flood which meant they had to haul water, but they didn't flood out every year. Um, and that has, been, that has been the theme for Sacramento, flooding. You know, we, now we think we don't have enough water, but flooding has been a prevailing theme. In 1886 and 1880, 1861 and 62, that winter, they had a huge storm, probably similar to what we had a week ago. I was reading about it in the paper, and they think that it was probably one of those rivers of water that came across, and maybe two that hit together, and the whole town flooded. So the fathers, the, the, the city fathers, decided they had to raise the level of the town, and maybe most of you know that. They raised the level of the town 12 feet from the river to 12th Street. Now what they did, because I saw a documentary on PBS about it, is they piled a ton of dirt right in the middle of the, of the street and raised everything up 12 feet, which meant your basements became sub-basements, your first floors became basements, and your second floor became your first floor. Or some people raised their buildings up. But if you go and look, just walk down the alleys in the old part of Sacramento, uh, Second Street and whatever, you'll see the doors that lead to what were used what used to be the first floors. Then the part between the road and the building was the sidewalk, and that was the responsibility of the owner in front of them. <laughs> so they had to build they build wooden steps. I don't know what all they did to you know, either filled it in or but they had to do the sidewalk part, which is why we got a lot of board boarded sidewalks, board sidewalks. When I was a kid, there, that was a, a hobo land. I mean, the homeless lived under there. There was just a warren of people who were homeless, who lived under the town, basically, in all those rooms. And you can go, they do tours down there. Uh, you could go along and you do tours, and then you could see the walls where people have written on them like graffiti from the old days, kind of fun. Um, so that, that brought us out to 12th Street, and then after that, if you go downtown and midtown, you're going to feel, see a whole lot of houses that are six feet off the ground. We call them flood basement Victorians or flood basement um, uh, craftsmen. And they were there so that they would be out of the water. So maybe my basement flooded, but my piano didn't get wet. When Lyon bought their little, um, the first office I was in on 21st and K, in the basement of that little flood basement Victorian, there was a gas stove and a canoe. <laughs> because in the summer, people went down in their basements and they cooked down there because it was cooler. Now you have to think that upstairs they were mostly heating with, because I know my grandmother did that, with a, and cooked with a wood stove. So the wood stove heated the house and you cooked with it, but boy, you didn't want to do that in the summer because the thing never cooled off. You know, <laughs> you'd still be hot at noon. Um, so. Let's look at what happened with mining. Of course, we know that Sutter discovered gold, and suddenly we had a flood of people coming for the, for the 49ers who came to mine for gold. And the first miners did placer mining. They were individuals or a couple of people together. They went along the streams. They dug the dirt. You've seen the long toms, which are basically a long box with a, a thing like this at the top. It had screen in it, and they just kept pouring water through it and they had little ridges along it, and the water washed the dirt and the rocks down, and then at the end of the day or every so often they'd stop, they'd scrape the dirt out behind these little ridges and pan it. That's how they got the gold. Pretty soon along the rivers it kind of ran out, so they moved 
away from the rivers, but then how to get water. Some of you may have been up driving around Dutch Flat and seen the flumes that they build. The flume is a great big raised wooden canal, basically. So they built this big long wooden canal on trestles coming always down, picked up water upstream, ran it to their mining thing, and then it went back into the rivers, washing a lot of dirt down the rivers. The first ones to wash dirt down the rivers. When that ended, then we went to company mining. Suddenly we were going to do mining that took some money. It needed equipment. You didn't just need a pan and a, and a, and a hammer and, and a saw to make your long toms, whatever. We had um, tunneling mining. So they, they mined underneath the ground and they looked for veins of ore. This is what caused the man's house to collapse in his, his living room to fall down <laughs> down 30 feet into an old mine. So the foothills are riddled with mines. Now, we don't fill a lot in the foothills, but now we have to be mindful, if you mean, if you think. <laughs> but if we go up there, we need to talk to the people up there, and you need to, you need to uh, see if you can get prop, uh, property ID or one of those ha natural hazard things that will tell you if there are mining, if there's been mining underneath. I'm not sure that all of them are mapped. I think some of them can be a very big surprise for people because nobody knew. You never told me I built over a mine. Well, I didn't know. Oh my gosh, I lived here 50 years and I didn't fall in. Sorry you did. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know we're always looking for liability and guess what? You have the deep pocket, so we have to start looking again. The second thing was dredging. How many of you grew up in Sacramento? So those of you who did might remember in the old days before there was um, Gold River, when everything out there was cobblestones. It wasn't dirt, cobblestones. Cobblestones, live oak, poison oak, and rattlesnakes. Because nobody could do anything with the land. When they built Gold River, they smoothed it out, they brought in a ton of dirt so there'd be dirt. But if you dig down probably two feet there, you're going to come to cobblestones. How did they get there? Well, that was caused by, uh, by um, dredging. So what they do is they created a lake. They floated this big pontoon machine that was a dredge, and they moved across the lake, digging up the dirt down 12 or 14 feet, 15, 20 feet. And they processed, processed it, picked up the gold, and dumped it out the back end. Well, what happened was the dirt went first, and then the smaller rocks and the bigger rocks, and then pretty soon we have these cobbles everywhere. Um, Aerojets built on that, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're little kind of hills of those. Yeah, there still are. So were, was that underwater then at one time? No, they, they created the water, and as they moved through the lakes, they just kept moving the lake in front of them. Hmm. And, um, but again, it, ne it needed water, right? And Aerojet sits on that land. Now, the problem at Aerojet, as you probably all know, is that there was so much um, chemical used in the development of the rockets out there that it has leached down into the, into the groundwater, and it's a, it's a toxic dump. So before they can do anything with the land out there, over and above the cobbles, they've got to clean, clean up the water act. And the problem with groundwater is it doesn't just stay under this house, it moves. So it, it's moving gradually out and then it affects wells. We have the same problem out at McClellan. There was a lot of jet fuel and that sort of thing. And I know because I lived in Rio Linda that the, and so property out there, that the houses that are closest to Aerojet at the north, uh, to uh, McClellan at the north end of the field, all of those wells became contaminated and everybody was on well water. So the uh, government had to come in and run public water to each of those properties. Now some people still have their wells and they would be using the wells probably to irrigate, but you have to know that you, they can't use it for drinking water because it's contaminated. Another water problem, always another water problem. Probably one of the things that affected us most was this last form of pub company mining called dredging. I'm sorry, t called hydraulic mining. And here's how it went. And you could see this again if you're going up to Tahoe just after you pass Dutch Flat. 
see these big walls like this. What they did is they took a mountain and they said, bet there's gold in here. At the bottom of the mountain, they built, they took logs and they put them like this. And then they took a hose, like a fire hose, and they washed the mountain down. And as the dirt came over these ridges, the heaviest stuff fell in the cracks. 